the morning, 7.30, actually 8. We are about to start our tour, it's raining. So we are starting in the underground garage. We are starting our trip in the south of Munich. Our goal for the day, Ponte di Legno in Italy. As you might imagine, we are taking the scenic route. And so 390 kilometers are ahead of us. Due to wet roads and constant rain, we are taking it easy. Life cannot always be sunshine, they say. And right now, this is literally true. So we are gliding as smoothly as possible with soft braking and a gentle hand on the throttle. After only 50 kilometers, we are encountering our first problem. Patrick has not only the smallest fuel tank, but an empty one as well. The plan was to fill up gas in Oberau some kilometers before Garmisch-Partenkirchen. Weather forecast says that the rain will stop there and we are eager to reach that point. Now we are in the middle of nowhere and have no clue where to find the next gas station. With some help from our navigation system, we found one. Less than 10 kilometers of gas are left in the tank. The motorcycle actually says zero kilometers are left. And we have eight kilometers to go. Let's hope for the best. After eight bit scary kilometers, we reached the gas station. I don't know how much gas was left in the tank. Usually it is more than you expect, but you never know and you don't want to sit at the side of the road in heavy rain without gas and about 350 kilometers to go. We are back on the road again. First small highlight of the day is the road from Oberau to Ettal and we are lucky. The rain has stopped and the road is almost dry so it is time to dry the tires a little bit. But our luck did not last long. Second highlight of the day is the road to Plansee. And of course, it is raining again. Usually, I would show you more of the scenic road with its twisties. Today, we skip this part and move on to better weather. Finally, the rain has stopped. For Patrick, it's time to change his wet socks and for the rest of us, our wet gloves. What do you do with wet socks? You hang them to dry. Next stop Namlostal. This is the first part of our trip that has the infamous restriction of 95 decibel for motorcycles. Around three years ago, the state of Tyrol decided to restrict some famous roads for loud motorcycles. Luckily, all our machines are below the threshold and so we are good to go. While enjoying the street as well as the great view, I do understand that living here with the constant noise of passing motorcycles must be annoying. At the same time, I think they should make the best of it. After all, motorcycles are tourism and tourism is money, I think. Stopping crazy people with illegal exhausts knee down on public roads? A noble but unfortunately futile course. You do not stop crazy people. Either they get stopped by the police or they eventually will stop themselves. Just close my eyes and think of you. 
We just had lunch and now we have a problem with our communication system. It seems like Patrick is having a bad day. First he had no gas, then he had wet socks and now his Zena is not working anymore. Did I tell you he has malicious back pain as well? Maybe water got inside. In the communications device I mean. But we don't know. It is connecting and after 5 seconds it is switching off again. So no more talking while driving for Patrick. At least not to us. Try when she left me, yeah, but a little bit inside, you know, you know, maybe things are gonna be alright. Cause I just wanna see the light. Hantenjoch is our first real mountain pass of the day. The narrow road is winding its way alongside the mountain to a height of 1894 meters. It is the direct connection from the Lechtal to the city Imst and closed for big trucks as well as caravans. Perfect for us and on a Friday early afternoon we can expect to have only the occasional car. I won't see your face where ever I look, I'm blinded by the light. So I let go, let go, I don't want to, but I'm gonna try when she left me. Yeah, but a little bit inside, you know, you know, maybe things are gonna be alright. Cause I just wanna see the light. Yeah, I just wanna see the light. Well, bad luck. For the most part we are following a small truck. At least the view is nice. From Imst our route is guiding us to the Swiss border. Of course we take the scenic route instead of the boring main roads down in the valley and get rewarded with twisty roads and perfect views. In the meantime Udo Sena also died. Or more precisely it decided to torment him with voice commands refusing to switch off. He had no choice but to dial down the volume to get some relief from the terror. Two communication devices down, it is getting lonely in the helmet. Welcome to Switzerland, the country with more speed controls than inhabitants and draconic penalty fees on top. Lucky you if you have cruise control. If you don't, you are like me, watching your speed like a hawk its prey. No time to enjoy the landscape or to keep an eye on the road. I do hate driving in Switzerland. But 
Switzerland is only a bad memory now. Welcome to Bella Italia. What a view. We are at Lake Resia. The weather is perfect now and we are stopping here for a few minutes to enjoy the famous church tower in the lake. The church tower is the last remaining structure of two villages that got demolished and then flooded in 1950. Somehow the Italian Nazis are involved in this as well. Can you imagine having to move from your family's home because of some people with the crazy idea to build a dam? I am sure some Chinese can relate to this. It is 5.30 pm now. We just started from Lake Resia and there are still 120 kilometers to go. Our two most difficult mountain passes are to come. The first one is Paso Stelvio from South Tyrol to Bormio and the second one Paso di Gavia from Bormio to Ponte di Ligno. We need to hurry a bit if we don't want to drive in the dark. Leaving this place, the sun's about to break. Y'all riding shotgun. The feeling will chase. I'm wide awake. Take me away now. Cause I Talking about hurrying a bit. We just lost two of our companions because they took the wrong turn. Let's wait for them. Paso Stelvio is one of the most famous roads for motorcyclists in the Alps. Coming from the north, the road has 48 hairpin curves, climbing to a height of 2757 meters. On the south side, 37 more hairpin curves are leading to a total of 85 turns. While being well maintained, the hairpins are a bit tricky to drive and the sheer number of them takes its toll on our concentration. Unfortunately, my camera didn't capture the most scenic part of the climb. Somehow it did not switch on. Maybe the day is too long already. At least I can show you the south side with its beautiful view. I'm just gonna drive you. And now the final one. Paso di Gavia is not as challenging as Paso Stelvio, but while having only 25 turns, for other reasons, it's almost as challenging. The road is not as well maintained, and as I said earlier, we are a bit late and it's getting dark already. To make it worse, on our way down from the top at a height of 2618 meters, we have to drive through the clouds. We are tired, the temperature is around 6 degrees, it's almost dark and really foggy. Not the best conditions to ride Paso di Gavia, but we'll manage to safely arrive in the hotel we booked for the night. 
Tomorrow is another day, 390 kilometers of twisty roads are waiting for us and the weather forecast says there is only a 50% chance of rain. Let's hope for the best.